last 25 years have seen a huge explosion in the number of electronic devices that we have. Laptops, mobile phones, tablets. Um, and for the first 15 years of that, um, we replaced them for a good reason. Um, the devices were underpowered. We, we generally replaced them to upgrade the devices. Um, but the last 10 years have seen a, a change there. Um, we've started replacing devices more because they break than because we need to upgrade them. Um, I'm standing here in front of you today trying to convince you to, uh, to change our design mindset. Um, if we don't, um, we will continue to, to fill our trash dumps with discarded electronic devices. First, a little bit about the organization that I work for. Um, one Laptop Per Child was uh, founded by Nicholas Negroponte. Our mission is to provide every child in the world with a uh, robust, low-power, uh, computational device. Our uh, principles are one laptop per child, that it's, it's saturated. The, the joke here is that uh, people consider, uh, would you consider that the pencil was a success if you only gave one pencil to every classroom? Um, the children must be free to take the laptop home. Um, it shouldn't stay in the school. This allows them to explore and to create um, outside of the very narrow uh, strictures of uh, what they're taught in school. We, uh, these laptops are distributed kindergarten through sixth grade. Those are the critical years in many places in the world. Children don't go to school after sixth grade. Um, it's also the time when you can make the most impact on their education. Finally, um, we believe that the laptop should be connected. We realize this is one area where we have not been quite as successful, but we, we work to uh, make whatever connectivity the children have as useful as possible. At this, at this point, we've distributed about two million laptops um, throughout the world. Our manufacturing partner um, here in Taiwan is Quanta Computer. Um, before I move on, I'm not here to, I'm, I'm not standing in front of you to sell the laptop. Um, when, sorry, we would be extremely happy if the market started providing the laptop that we've designed. Um, without, we would close down quite happily. Um, and when we started production, there was an explosion of netbooks. We thought that we might have succeeded, but what we learned was that um, the network manufacturers were copying us on price and ignoring the rest of our design philosophy. So how is an EXO different? Um, we believe, foremost, we believe that it should be safe, um, that there should do no harm unto the children. We believe that it should be low power. Um, this is very important. In many places in the world, the amount of use that uh, a child can get uh, from the laptop depends directly on how much power that laptop takes per hour of use. It should be low cost. Um, many of these countries cannot afford to, uh, to buy expensive laptops and distribute them to their kids. Uh, robust, um, I'll get back to that, and usable outdoors. Starting with safe for children. Um, we use a, a very safe battery technology, lithium ferrophosphate. Um, it's slightly less dense than lithium ion. However, it's, it's completely safe and it allows operation across the full range of temperatures up to, f up to 50 C. No heavy metals. Um, this has already been mandated in just about every country in the world, uh, the reduction of harmful substances. Um, no phthalates. This one is new and in most of the developed world is starting to be regulated as well, but only for children's products. Um, phthalates are substances that uh, um, affect the human endocrine system, so there's good reason to believe that they uh, affect the hormones and the development of children. Um, we are the only laptop currently being manufactured that actually meets the requirements of no heavy metals or no phthalates um, for children's toys. Um, low case temperatures. Um, so that we can actually provide these laptops to children everywhere in the world, we operate at temperatures up to 50 C. 
um, a normal electronic device is allowed to have a case temperature of 70 C. Um, it's felt that that's safe. However, for children, children burn easier than adults. Um, we actually make our designs such that um, at operation, even at 50 C, there is no part of the case, not even the power adapter, that exceeds 65 C. I feel that's important. High altitude operation. This, this is a great example. Um, at high altitudes, the insulation ca um, capacity of air is reduced. So electrocution hazard is actually higher at high altitudes. Um, it turns out that power adapters um, are rated only to about 3,000 meters. Uh, we have children working um, using our laptops at 6,000 meters. But the cost of modifying the adapter, uh, uh, the design, the building, an adapter that operates at 6,000 meters, it doesn't cost any more than one for 3,000 meters. It's simply that the industry has not accepted that that's the altitude to which they should be designing. Low power. Um, I'll start with the display power. Um, later on, we'll hear from uh, the founder of Pixel Chi, um, who was also one of the founders of OLPC, did a lot of work on really cutting the power required by the display. As processors and memory becomes much more efficient, most of the power of a laptop or of a tablet starts to go toward driving the display. Um, so both reducing the power required by the display and also making the display use ambient lighting to uh, drive it so that you don't have to have a backlight that takes three or four watts to be visible. And in full sunlight, even three or four watts doesn't do the job. Careful electrical design. Um, across the industry, I'm just surprised at how often designers will just take the easy route and throw um, a linear voltage regulator into a circuit when for pennies more, if even that much, they could use a much more efficient switching regulator. Um, across the design, um, you just save 10 milliwatts here, 50 milliwatts there, and it does add up. Flexible power input. Um, our laptop takes, currently takes anything from about 10 volts up to 25 volts. This is very important. Um, you can run our laptops from cars, but more importantly, you can run it from solar cells. Um, the, the high voltage, when a solar cell is fully illuminated, it tends to put out quite a high voltage, um, and a normal laptop just couldn't take it. Uh, we've also modified the power input to obtain the most efficiency from a solar cell. It's, again, this did not increase the cost, it increased the design time slightly, but once it goes into production, there's no additional cost to the laptop to make it operate perfectly fine. This is a, shown on the slide, is a 10 watt um, solar cell. Finally, power factor correction. Um, this is mandated, uh, sorry, power factor correction is um, making sure that your power supply doesn't take all of the power at one point in the cycle. Um, for large electronic devices, this has been mandated. Anything over 70 watts that you buy nowadays um, has to have a very good power factor. However, there's no restriction um, on the available power factor at 10 or 15 watts. Well, what happens if you take 200 laptops that each take 10 watts but are using non-power factor corrected power supplies is that the amount of power drawn is much more than you calculate on the back of an envelope. Uh, we've literally seen generators and wiring systems melted from uh, misuse, <laughs> um, miscalculations. So, um, and across the industry, like I said, above 70 watts, everybody pays attention to this, but nobody builds a 10 watt power supply that's power factor corrected. Outdoor use. Um, a lot of our children are in places where there is no um, no school, or the school is under a tree. Um, the need for a sunlight readable display was very high. Um, and I think that will be discussed somewhat later. Um, water resistant, uh, the laptop, unfortunately, really achieving water resistance does increase the price. However, a, lo 
uh, you can go a large way without driving up the price of the product. Dust resistant, um, similar to water. Um, these laptops are used in very dirty and dusty places. Finally, UV resistance. Again, this is one of the places where the industry does not really, outside of the automotive industry, there's very little attention paid to making devices that really can withstand five years of use in the sun. Um, but it's necessary. Robustness. Um, we do a lot of drop testing on our laptop. We try to make it so that children can drop it safely. Um, the height, well, you can drop it repeatedly from about three quarters of a meter. You can actually drop it from a meter and a half, and most times it will survive. Um, but this is just a case of careful mechanical design. Um, and certainly the children do drop it. No moving parts. Um, we, we, we talked about low power. A typical laptop uses about a watt to power a fan to get rid of the excess heat uh, from its waste. Um, this fan, if it ever stops working, really reduces the lifetime of the laptop. Um, same, we do not have any hard drives, um, and the industry as a whole is starting to move in this direction. What I'll say about uh, solid state storage, though, is it's been getting a lot less reliable, especially over the last year. Um, when we started out, we were looking at um, 100,000 write cycles on a typical flash drive. Um, at this point, um, well, well, let's see, a year ago, the MLC, the two bits per cell uh, devices started appearing. It dropped it somewhere into the five to 10,000 write cycles, but it was still somewhat acceptable. Unfortunately, the industry has moved and is pushing the three bit per cell devices at this point and they are unacceptable in terms of, of wear. They really do wear out, um, and we've, we're starting to have problems actually finding cheaper devices that meet our wear requirements. Repairable. Um, it takes eight screws to replace our screen. Um, it takes 20 screws just to get the cover off of my Macintosh. Um, when I started at OLPC, I was told the children will repair the laptop, and I didn't believe it. Um, but again and again, I've been proven wrong. Um, in many schools, um, one of the children decides he's going to set up a laptop shop and really starts offering care and repair of laptops to his classmates. Um, Five-year lifetime. Um, in order to reach a five-year lifetime, both careful design and also some modularity is required. Um, we realize that some parts are going to wear out over five years, and it's important to make them easy to replace. So that's really all I had to say, um, that making long-lasting, low-power, robust devices doesn't need to add cost. All that needs to happen is a change in mindset among the designers. Mm -hmm.